You're watching WUFT TV News. Hurricanes Milton and Helene have drastically disrupted the high school football landscape this season, with many teams, including those here in Gainesville, being forced to play two games in one week's time. Today, the state's governing body of high school athletics took steps to remedy those issues. WUFT Sports Issa Rivera is live at FHSAA headquarters in Gainesville. Issa, a change in when the playoffs start are among the items leaders discussed today. That's right. One of the main takeaways from today's meeting with the association's executive director is the extension of the season by one week. This move will allow for some wiggle room for teams whose season was upended by hurricanes and other severe weather. All of these things, the inclement weather has resulted in games contests being uh, delayed or canceled uh, across the state. In the fall sports update, the Florida High School Athletic Association addressed the issues caused by severe weather. It includes waiving minimum contest requirements for individual sports and extending the district tournament through Saturday for volleyball. For football, the common bye week previously set for the week of December 2nd has been moved up to the week of November 4th, extending the season by one week. This week can now be used to make up a game or as a bye week before starting the playoffs, as long as all games are completed by November 7th. We picked Thursday, November 7th just to give our staff time to make sure all of the results that are posted on Max Preps are correct and that we can release our brackets for the playoffs on that Saturday, which would give our coaches the opportunity to prepare for the state series the following week. The high school football playoffs for class 1A through 7A begin on November 15th, pushed back one week from the previously scheduled November 8th, with the state championship currently set for December 11th. Damon reminded the media that all dates are subject to change because there are still seven weeks left in hurricane season. Live in Gainesville, Issa Rivera, WUFT Sports. Cold air is moving southward coming up. I'm going to let you know when we could be into the 40s after the break. You're watching WUFT TV News. Already jacket weather into the early morning today. We are in the mid 50s when the sun came up 57 our early morning low Gainesville 55 and high springs and further up north temperatures even colder on the backside of a cold front into the 30s here in the center of the country. This cold air is going to be moving southward over the next couple of days and we're looking at a pretty significant drop in temperatures behind that front. Once it gets here, that's going to be happening. Well, at the end of the day, Tuesday into Wednesday, that's when that cold air pushes in. We'll have winds out of the north all day Wednesday, driving down that cold air, and it's going to be a significant change. Highs may only be into the 60s for Wednesday, but tomorrow still looking relatively mild. After start in the 60s, we're into the 70s and upper 70s by lunchtime into the 80s into the afternoon. This is pretty close to average highs, but that cold air is going to be on the doorstep and moving in for Wednesday. Right now we're into the mid 80s, 84 right around campus. Winds light out of the west and that's a warm wind direction or kind of a neutral one, but north winds will get going on a Wednesday and they're going to be gusting to around 25 miles an hour. Hardly a cloud in the sky though for the moment. We're 87 currently Jacksonville, a little cooler Crystal River and temperatures tomorrow pretty close to what we are seeing today, but that front is just to our north. You'll notice though, very few clouds along this front. It's going to pass through, not produce any rain, but it will give us a pretty good drop in temperatures and a drop in humidity. Dew point, the measure of moisture in the atmosphere into the 60s the next couple of days, but a big drop into the 40s as that cool, dry air moves in and it's going to be in place. Headed towards the weekend. This weekend is homecoming and weather going to cooperate. We're still feeling very fall like, but we're going to be threatening the 80 degree mark by the time we get to Saturday. So we'll start warming up after that front comes in on Wednesday. Push close to those uh, upper 70s and 80s. Great looking days actually coming for both days of the weekend. We'll be flirting with that 90 degree or excuse me, 80 degree mark both Saturday and Sunday. Pretty much zero chance of rain either one of those days. Our weather looking uh, pretty fall like as we summarize it here on the seven day. That cold air really arrives on Wednesday. It's going to be blustery and early Thursday. You may be waking up with temperatures in the seven into the 40s, but we'll end in the 70s. 
Hurricane Milton has passed, but its impacts have not. Stay tuned after the break to hear how this natural disaster impacted the local sports community. You're watching WUFT-TV News. Welcome to sports, I'm Talia Baya. Over the weekend, the Gators did not just suffer a loss to the eighth-ranked Tennessee Vols. They also lost quarterback Graham Mertz for the season. Prior to exiting the field, Mertz threw for 791 yards, six touchdowns, two interceptions, and completed 76.6% of his passes this season. In a press conference today, Napier said he will undergo surgery next week and then followed with this sincere message. It's only right for me to say how much I appreciate and am thankful for Graham in terms of all that he has brought to the table uh, to our team, not only his production on the field, uh, but also just his impact on the team as a whole, his leadership, uh, the work ethic, the example, the self-discipline. Although an unfortunate situation, fans will look forward to five-star G.J. Lagway star against Kentucky this weekend. Now for a recap of the game, WFT's Ben McLeish was on site with all the coverage. The Gators came devastatingly close to their first ranked win of the season, but missed opportunities and an injury to starting quarterback Graham Mertz led to heartbreak in Knoxville. DJ Lagway hushed the rowdy Tennessee crowd with a last-minute touchdown pass to Tamere DK. But the silence was short-lived as the Volunteers scored a game-winning touchdown in overtime just minutes later, defeating the Gators 23-17. It was a crushing loss for a Florida team that held a 10-point lead halfway through the third quarter. But their lead should have been much greater. A fumble at the one-yard line, failed fourth down conversion, and substitution penalty limited the Gators to just three first-half points, despite entering the red zone four times. Florida head coach Billy Napier said those mistakes were costly for the Gators. We had a chance to really take control of the game in the first half, and we missed on those opportunities. Still, the Gators controlled the game until Graham Mertz's injury completely changed the momentum. DJ Lagway struggled to get the offense going, but with the game on the line, he showed a flash of greatness. Napier accredited Lagway for stepping up when the team needed him most. As a competitor, he has this unique ability to raise his level of play at critical moments. Napier initially lined the team up for a potential game-winning two-point conversion. But after Tennessee took a timeout, he decided to play for overtime, and the rest was history. Next, the Gators come back home to take on Kentucky. Reporting from Neyland Stadium in Knoxville, Tennessee, Ben McLeish, WUFT Sports. In high school football, it's been Monday Night Lights for the last few weeks for Buhold Bobcats, as severe weather like Hurricane Milton has forced them to delay their games. WFT's Madison Walker is out at Citizens Field with a district matchup they need to win to stay in the playoff hunt. High schools across Gainesville have been dealing with the aftermaths of Hurricane Helene and Milton with classes getting canceled and sports schedules getting thrown off. Buholtz High School's varsity football team is one of those that has been affected as the Bobcats have faced recent challenges of rescheduling multiple games. This puts the Bobcats in a behind schedule position a second time due to weather delays. The football team saw history repeat itself last Friday, the 11th, with their game against Tekoi Creek being rescheduled due to Hurricane Milton for today. On Friday, October 4th, Buholtz was able to get in the first half of their game against the Hurricanes before getting rained out and postponed. The game was forced to be made up the following Monday, allowing the Bobcats to come up victorious 52-7. Buholtz isn't the only team feeling these effects. Other schools around the area are playing catch-up tonight due to Milton, with Gainesville making up their game against Leesburg and Eastside taking on South Sumter, leaving the Rams with two games on their schedule this week. Live from Citizens Field, I'm Madison Walker, WUFT News. Lastly, the Gator men's basketball team was ranked 21st in the preseason AP poll today, marking their first appearance since 2019. What do you guys think? This is pretty big news for the Gators. Yeah, that's exciting, especially with that disappointment about football. 
this is a great pick me up. Yeah, you know what they say, the calm after the storm. And you know, speaking of storm, I had to put on my long sleeve dress today because it was pretty chilly out. William, yeah. can you tell us about how it's going to affect our week? Yeah, we're definitely looking at some jacket weather over the next few days and especially for Thursday morning. That's going to be maybe borderline cold weather in the early part of the day into the 40s weekend homecoming game. The weather looking great both days of the weekend highs going to be into the upper 70s to right around 80 degrees. No rain on that seven day. Looks great. Thanks for joining us. We're back here tomorrow for another edition of First at Five. But your North Central Florida news is always on at WUFT.org and on all of our social media platforms. Have a good night.